Hey, good morning guys. Welcome back to FDX Custom Rods. We're not in the rod shop today. We're out on the dirty side and obviously it is filthy. That's a Nathan. This is a busted static load tester and today I'm going to show you how to build one yourself. So stick around. Okay, we're in the dirty side because we've been working on the Swamp Cat. We've been working on the Ranger Z20. We've been doing everything. We've got pieces and parts and tanks and... <laughs> Projects galore. If you haven't seen the uh, Swamp Cat videos where we're working on rebuilding the Stratus, mm -hmm. um, it's it's exhausting to just watch them. I can <laughs> tell you that. We've been working on it for like two months now. That's why you haven't seen a lot of rod shop videos. We've been building a lot of rods, but honestly, time to edit and shoot. We just haven't had a lot of that. So I've been promising this for months and I'm finally gonna show you how to build it basically out of scrap. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disassemble this one. So tape's coming off and then I'm gonna make some marks and I'm gonna give you guys some measurements so you can duplicate this or have this as a DIY. Or have this as a pattern. Yeah, we got cars and trucks. So people are going to work with jobs. I, I don't know what that is. He's you know supposed to be is? working too, but he's been working a lot of over lately. So he got the day off. Been playing with matches. Yep, playing with matches. Doing All right, so this, this tape is good tape. Apparently, it does not want to let go. Nope. Don't even think about it. Don't even. <laughs> I know what you thought about. Okay. Well, Nathan's playing in the trash over there. We're going to talk about some things that I don't like about my very first one. Um, one, the angle, which was about 30 degrees or 60, uh, depending on which way you measure, um, was just a little bit too low to properly load so what I wound up doing is I would put a little spacer in underneath clamp it down to my bench and we got a little high angle so I, I cut a different angle and I'll tell you what that angle is in a minute um, the other thing I didn't like about it is that sometimes the trigger when you're doing a casting rod especially a conventionally wrapped casting rod when you load it it's going to want to turn so what we're going to do is, and this was not my idea, this was a suggestion from one of you guys on one of the other videos, um, so I'm going to steal it. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm taking this old one, it's just a piece of 2 inch Schedule 40 casing pipe that I had laying around. I'm going to not, I'm going to put a line on the bottom of it and you can just figure out for yourself where your bottom is before you drill the holes. So um, that's just a, a, a layout mark. I'm going to disassemble this one real quick, which, well, not with that, I'm not. Whoa, how did I put that in there? I need a longer bit. Oh, filter bits. Oh, I moved the bit chamber on me. Yeah, I'm trying to organize a little bit. I think I reach in there. That'll do it. Ta-da! see it that one's out. okay this one is officially disassembled okay so what we what I did in the original one is I just put two pieces of plywood together screwed them together with some drywall screws and I don't know how long I've had this. It's been longer than I've known Nathan, and that's a while. Um, it it is static low tested, hundreds of rods, and it's time for it to say goodbye. Bye. So I'm going to recycle this piece of pipe, and only and it is it's just a piece of two inch PVC. I'm pretty sure it was two inch. Yep, two inch PVC. It's about 10 inches long. I would make a new one probably about a foot long. Just It makes it a little easier when we get to another part of it. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I had drilled two holes, um, access holes, so I could 
get my drywall screws in and screw it to the side, which we're going to be doing again in a minute here. So, um, the changes that I made in the angle, this is now a 55 degree angle. I just cut it on, it was a piece of scrap that had a 45 cut on it, and that was too steep, too high. So, I, I cut it at 55 degrees, and if you guys don't have you know a protractor then that means you're basically at four and five eighths on one side and nine and three eighths on the other side mark it draw a straight line that's going to be 55 degrees um, just a, another piece of scrap plywood here it's roughly four and a half by nine it's left over from some other project we're going to permanently mount it the two before to the base then we're going to mount the rod holder to the riser here um, and that's pretty much it so Nathan mm -hmm. if you would the glue bot down there the yellow lids on the glue thingy Wood glue. that's it that's the glue bot um, you don't need to do that it's, it's, it's magic I'll show you in a minute so I'm just going to mark real quick on here where we're going to glue so we don't make too big a mess. I'm just taking a marker. You can do this with a pencil or you can just wing it and make a mess. Um, I got my dirty shirt on because Nathan, we're going over there and start playing with gel coat in a little bit. Dirty shirt. Yep. We've learned. Um, we also are going to need to drill some pilot holes. Uh, back in the drill box. La 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 la. Work. That's the one I'm looking for. Perfect. So switch out. You don't have to do this. This is gonna make it easier. So I'm gonna drill a couple pilot holes here. Forward works better. I just drilled three. Didn't countersink them. I'm gonna countersink them from this side because we're coming in with the bottom. We're coming in from the bottom with screws. And we need, I've got some number six uh, by two inch coarse drywall screws. So I need three of those. And put the other bit back in that holds those screws better. Best part is 90% of us have all this material yeah, in got, our garage. Exactly. You've got scrap laying around somewhere, and most people have a drill, and I don't care how you cut it. You can cut it with a handsaw. It's just slower. Um, I have the toys, so I'm going to use them. Um, glue bot. Any wood glue. This happens to be tight bond waterproof glue. doesn't really matter. I use it in some of my other projects, but this is the coolest thing. You fill it here, and you just squeeze, and you can glue at any angle in any direction. And it keeps it clean. You need a rag. Ah, la, 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 la. Paper towels, perfect. You don't clean the tip of your glue box. <clears throat> and these things are like 10 bucks on Amazon. It's pretty awesome. I found it watching another video of some of the woodworking stuff I do. Um, so we put some glue on here. I got it. I know this is not a perfect, you know, glue job. I, if you want it perfect, get a brush out, glue both sides. You don't starve the joint. But we're gonna hold it with screws anyway. So I'm just going to smear it around on here a little bit and then we're going to take our two inch drywall screws, get it where we want it, and it slips off like that when you squeeze it too much. <clears throat> you don't have to have the glue either, you can put it together with drywall screws and, screws and it'll last forever. Um, my first one did, hold it right there just a second, let me get one screw in it. If you have an assistant, that's even easier. You got it on the line? Yep. All right, coming in. Maybe. On the line, close enough. This is not a piano. And if I put that third one in, it's gonna put it in at an angle. You got one inch over there. Right 
Thank you, sir. One inch in here in the front to keep it from poking through. There we go. Now that, in about an hour, is pretty much indestructible. Now, the other fix that we're gonna do, one, I don't like how rough that was. I just cut it with a side grinder. I'm just kind of roughed it out. We're gonna trim it up on my cheapy little bench top bandsaw here in a little bit. But the other thing that we need to do is I wanna make the notch so that when you put a rod in it, it doesn't turn. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a hole here and we're gonna put a V in it with a bandsaw or you can do it with a handsaw or hacksaw. And then when it slides in, it'll stop. It won't spin. It'll be okay. locked in. And again, again, this wasn't my idea. One of you guys came up with it. I appreciate it. It was awesome. So I'm just going to drill a pilot hole here with a small bit. Maybe. Okay, I'm going to switch over to a bigger bit. Now, I'm gonna go over here to the bandsaw. <clears throat> I'm gonna grab a camera. Yep. Do this real quick. So, I'm gonna raise my bandsaw. I'm gonna plug it up. That would be better. And I am going to attempt to cut. Once you get, yeah, can you get in there and see that, Nathan? So I'm going to try to cut one side without cutting the other, and we're going to cut it at a little bit of an angle. Let me get my marker so I got some idea what I'm doing. La, 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 la. Okay. All right, so my goal here is to just cut a V, like so, thinking that the trigger will rest in there, and you got plenty of room for the rest of the handle, the real seat. So we got power on. That's much neater. Okay, now it's assembly time. So what we're gonna do, I, I just trim that up. We got the notch here. You know what, I'll probably sand that a little bit. theory when you slide it in it's gonna lock and stay it's not gonna twist as much mm. yeah that worked there's some tape in here like I had before to keep it from slipping around so much I also use a piece of foam on top to hold it as I stuff it in actually it's gonna work pretty good so now we're gonna attach it to our base same thing as before, just some drywall screws. Use a long bit. Find a drywall screw, one inch. Inch and a quarter work just fine. A uh, magnetic tip bit would be nice. Ta-da! 
That works a little better. One of those days we got a drop season in the rod shop today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going through the pilot hole first. I'm going to set up one more of those, Nathan. I'll go ahead and set this other one so I can, well, I can see where it is. Okay. Now, we're just going to line this up. About so. Line it up with the top. There is your static load tester. Start to finish, and 15 minutes. Materials used, about a buck and a half. Nice. Probably got them all laying around in the garage somewhere. If not, any of your you know, hardware stores are gonna have. Cut pieces. Yeah, you, especially if you go to a big box store, they have these called project pieces, and they're just like, you can buy a two before that's two foot long. Yeah, you pay a little more per foot, but if you only need two feet, you don't need eight. You know, but you know me, I buy eight and then I got scrap for things like this. But anyway, static load testing DIY just for you. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. And we're out.